Hello and welcome to our spring show for The Vessel Online. I'm Bryce Couch. The University of Sioux Falls has no doubt seen many changes over the past year. I'm here to keep you updated on what has happened through this time and all the events around campus. Over one year into the pandemic that changed our lives, the University of Sioux Falls Athletic Department is still navigating the rocky terrain and finding ways for the athletes to compete safely. Here's The Vessel Online's Mercedes Odegaard with more. It's been over a year since the COVID-19 pandemic started and changed the way we live our lives. Since then, Pam Gohl, the USF Athletic Director, has been finding ways for the athletes to still compete while also following the guidelines of this new normal. It's been busy. Um, lots of meetings ahead of time to try to come up with the right protocols, um, to make sure we're following all the right testing strategies, um, to make sure that we're providing this the safest environment for our athletes to be able to compete. No doubt it's been busy, but the the payoff is so worth it. After a season cut short by the pandemic last year, the USF winter sport athletes were ready to get back to competing this year. To watch our winter sports be able to compete was, um, our winter sport athletes be able to compete was amazing. Um, you know, wins and losses, yes, of course, you hope to have more wins maybe than you, they did, but but the win, the win for us every week was just being able to step on the court for basketball and the win uh, for like our swimmers and our indoor track, just be able to compete at a conference meet. Um, you know, those are things that months ago, we didn't know if they would be even be options. And also there are plenty of division two um, schools around the country that um, they, they canceled winter sports. So we feel really fortunate that we were able to get our winter sports in. Our spring sports are just getting started. Um, uh, our softball teams already competed. Our tennis uh, and golf teams have competed as well. Um, the interesting thing about our spring is that we'll not only have spring um, uh, uh, sports going on, but we'll also have fall sports competing some in the spring too. So that makes it a little more busy. But again, uh, the, win, the win is the, them being able to compete. For The Vessel Online, I'm Mercedes Odegaard. It has been over a year since the USF track and field team has competed in their conference meet. The team has just finished up their indoor conference meet and they are ready to move on to the outdoor season. Abby Hanna has the story. The USF track and field team just concluded their indoor season. Senior distance athlete Tiana Wald says that the team competed well overall. Um, as a team, I we did pretty good. It was a very different year because our guy side graduated a lot of seniors, and so their their team is very young, and they have a lot of freshmen. Um, and our girls team, we also graduated a few seniors. But otherwise, it was pretty good, especially given the circumstances. We ended up getting 12th at conference as a girls team. Senior multi-event athlete Emily Olson had some big performances at conference this season. I think I did pretty well. I was happy with my standings. Um, I was able to place and get a better mark for my multi overall. Both Emily Olson and Tiana Wald are looking forward to their outdoor season as they prefer outdoor over indoor. I would say I prefer outdoor season just because I've kind of got my gears going for the year um, and I'm ready to continue that and see my marks improve. Um, although I do also enjoy indoor season. Outdoor season, it does add two more events. So that's the heptathlon. It, that includes the same events as indoor and then it adds the 200 meter run as well as javelin. Outdoor is just a lot more like you can just like hang out with your friends and sit out and like have a good time and watch all the races and it's all right there. Where like indoor, you can't watch all the meets or all the races sometimes or all the events. And outdoor, like with, like the fans and stuff, it just feels like a better environment to compete in. The outdoor season for the USF track and field team will look a little different this year. Well, for track, we didn't have an outdoor season last year. So that is going to be a huge change to have a season this year. Kuchak on three. One, two, three. Kuchak! For the Vessel Online, I'm Abby Hanna. For the first time since 2019, the University of Sioux Falls track team is back outside for their outdoor season. Jameson Wolko has the story. Spring is in the air, and after months of being cooped up indoors, the University of Sioux Falls track and field team is ready to get outside and stretch their legs. 
Head coach Doug Peterson talked about the upcoming season. Yeah, we just finished up our um, indoor conference meet last week at Mankato, and uh, now we're trying to regrouping and getting our sights set to the outdoor schedule now um, with outdoor championships coming in May. So it'll be a nice change, get a chance to get outside and start our competitions. So that'll get rolling uh, at the end of March and then through April into May. While athletes and coaches are in full training mode, they're still taking the necessary precautions to keep themselves and others safe from the COVID-19 virus. Part of the NCAA COVID protocol is um, our athletes, uh, we're getting tested on a weekly basis. We have 25% of our team gets tested every week. Uh, many of the competitions that we go to, the athletes have to be tested. Uh, if they're competing that week, they have to be tested. Um, some of the competitions, they're even tested twice a week. I know like for our outdoor con or indoor conference meet, um, everybody was tested on Monday and then they were tested with rapid testing, testing prior to leaving for the competition on either uh, Friday or Saturday. But even though this season is sure to be a unique one, it hasn't affected the team morale. It's always just fun to hang out with all the guys and get even better just throwing every day. Um, we're lucky to even have this, honestly, and just kind of thank God that we're doing it. So. For the Vestal Online, I'm Jameson Waco. Thanks for the updates on the track team, Abby and Jameson. Great to hear that even though things may look different this year, the track team is still able to compete. Up next is a story about another team who has also been successfully competing this year. The 2021 spring baseball season is underway, and Tyler Blackburn has an update on their performance so far. The University of Sioux Falls baseball team is halfway through their spring season that got off to a late start in March. So far, they have played 21 games and have an 8-13 and 13 record. Head coach Grant Heeb talks about the team's keys to success as they continue to play out their season. I mean, our starting pitching has been good. Um, bullpen has been we're trying to shake things out and figure out who we can trust and who we can go to and who's going to throw strikes basically and come in and give us a chance to, to win ball games late. On March 27th and 28th, the Cougars played a home series against Bemidji State and won two games out of three. After a tough loss in the first game, the Cougars battled back on day two, led by Caleb Dittmartson, Alex Kraut, and Peyton Livingston on the mound. Key hits were also had by Ryan Bernardi, Sam Mickles, Grant Lung, and Trey Hubers on offense. Senior Zane Butts also contributed with some stellar defense at third base. Butts talks about what the team needs to do to be successful for the rest of the season. Uh, I think in order to have you know, a successful rest of the season, we need to learn how to finish games. A lot of the times, a lot of our losses this year so far, have, we've been in the game every single time, and then we, it just seems to slip out of our fingers in the last two or three innings. And We just need to finish the game and, and see how the season goes from there on. Along with finishing the season, Coach Heeb is also looking to see what next year will be like for his team, including the guys that will return and the recruits that will be joining the program. We're still actively recruiting. I mean, we're trying to bring in some junior college guys. We think we could add some depth in our pitching staff. And, you know, we're losing both our corner infielders and, and one of our catchers. So it's, you know, we'd like to bring in some bats that can help us on the corner of the infield. and. The next home game for the Cougars will be the weekend of April 17th and 18th at the Birdcage in Sioux Falls. Come out to support the USF baseball team as they take on Wayne State in a three-game series. I am Tyler Blackburn, and this has been The Vessel Online. While many students have seen success this past season, one woman's track athlete has been setting records and making history for her team. Jameson Wokol has the story. This past March, University of Sioux Falls fifth-year senior Emma Hertz competed at the NCAA Division II Indoor Track and Field Championship, ending up with two All-American performances in the weight throw and the shot put. The national meet was in Birmingham, Alabama um, at the sports complex they have down there. Really nice place to be and um, 
got there on Tuesday. Had a lot of Dunkin' Donuts in the morning, so that was great. And so since it was COVID and everything, we couldn't practice in the facility, so we had to find our own area to practice before the actual meet. So we just practiced outside at a high school track and um, then we competed. The road leading to her fifth national meet has been a long one, starting all the way back when she joined her middle school track team. I started throwing in seventh grade. I honestly just did it as a joke, not a joke, but just to try something new because I was originally a sprinter at that age before I started gaining weight and muscle. Um, and I found out I was good at it, so just stuck with it. With one more year of eligibility left, Emma's story at the University of Sioux Falls is far from over. But even beyond her last season, Emma says she would like to stay active in the sport. I guess it all just depends on what my sixth year will bring me because I'd love to go to trials for the events that I do, especially like, I think I have a good shot for, well, maybe either of them, honestly, all of them. But um, I'd love to do that. Just try it, and then if not, then I'll just end up being a coach somewhere it's warm. For the Vessel Online, I'm Jameson Waco. Great story, Jameson. Glad we had the opportunity to hear about one of the awesome athletes that is a part of a USF team. USF is blessed with many successful athletes who are breaking records and making an impact. Next up is another story about a USF athlete who has done just that. USF alum Adam Sheffield has been working hard towards his goal of competing in the NFL. I sat down with him to talk about his career so far and his ideas for the future. Former University of Sioux Falls football player Adam Sheffield played his last snap for the coup in 2018, but since then has been working tirelessly towards his goal of playing football at the professional level. Since I last played at USF, my journey has been a roller coaster, <laughs> I guess you could say. Uh, it's been up and down, but um, you know, after I was on the USF uh, in 2019, I was with the Colts, Indianapolis Colts for a little bit. That fell through, and then I ended up staying with or signing with the Sioux Falls Storm. Sheffield has learned that opportunities in the NFL are very few and far between. That's why he works hard to stay physically prepared in order to take advantage of every opportunity that comes his way. The biggest thing is, you know, you want to be able to, you know, when you get a call, you know, you want to be ready to go. Um, and that's the biggest thing. The biggest key is, is making sure that you do everything that you can to make sure that when opportunity comes calling, that you're ready to answer and you're ready to take full advantage of the opportunity because they have come to find out they're very few and far between. Overall, the future is very bright for Sheffield as he continues to work towards his goals. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life, you know, because just working, you know, five, six days a week, you know, on average every day, you know, really good, strong workouts. I just feel really strong, feel really in really good shape, feel healthy, feel just really good, um, you know, preparing myself for this upcoming season um, and just pursuing, just making sure that I stay ready. For the best of mine, this is Bryce Couch. We are taking a break now, and when we come back, Aaron Cheney will have stories on the many clubs on campus that held fun events all while social distancing.
back to the USF Vessel Online, our spring show. Today we will look at the heart of Culture Club, what happens behind the scenes of Crew Cinema Club, socially distanced ping pong tournaments, and more happening on campus. Clubs on campus have a unique influence on student life on campus. One club in particular has taken this school year by storm, bringing a youthful spirit. Parker Brown has the story. Well, Chutes and Ladders League really uh, started out as a joke, uh, you know, if you would believe that. College students and a children's game. Two things you wouldn't necessarily think would go together. Kale Anglicus created the club early in the fall semester. The way that I got into Chutes and Ladders League is uh, one day I was at home in Minnesota and I said to my friends that I had there, I'm like, hey, you guys want to play some Chutes and Ladders? I have a board downstairs in my basement. And uh, from there, we had a very, very competitive night of playing shoots and ladders. And it was so much fun that I thought, you know what? I can start a club at USF for this and share, share my love for what I did tonight with the rest of the campus. The shoots and Ladders League has seen a lot of growth in less than a year. My favorite part about being in shoots and Ladders League is the community that uh, has grown. Uh, drastically. Um, I, I think at the beginning of this year we started out with maybe 10 to 12 people and now we're up to a group of about uh, 20 uh, consistent members and about 30 total members. Part of the fun is how serious their play on this board game can get. Basically when we're done playing a game once you land on a spot that's how many points you're gonna get for the night and over the course of a semester these points accumulate and if you have enough points, you get to compete for a trophy at the end of the semester. Uh, our very own Mama Goose. Um, I think the most comical thing about the situation is uh, actually having a referee for a children's board game. To me, that's even more ridiculous than actually playing the board game. At the end of the day, the club focuses on fun and having a good time. The most rewarding part about having a Shoots and Ladders League is the very special culture that we've kind of built up here. Like, we all have our own, like, little inside jokes that we all do, and um, there's just so many references that we make here that it's so much fun. And uh, I think everyone who comes here has a very good time uh, being here uh, because they keep coming back, so. <laughs> Each club member even has their own strategies and favorite game pieces, too. Favorite game piece? Cookie Monster. Of course. Cookie Monster all the way. Especially um, with the Shoots and Ladders League board, I will say that Big Bird is probably my favorite character. Um, all of them have nicknames except Zoe. But, you know, Big Bird is just kind of a big burden sometimes, you know? Either you have to wear that big burden or you put that big burden on somebody else. And um, I won a lot of games with Big Bird. I've also lost a lot of games with Big Bird. So it's always just a fun, fun toss up whenever I uh, play on this board. Students have even learned some valuable life lessons from this children's game with the club's signature slogan. Uh, the slogan for Shoots and Ladders League is the board giveth and the board taketh away. For The Vessel Online, I'm Parker Brown. This semester, the Shoots and Ladders League has been meeting at 7 p.m. For more information, look for their posters around campus. Have you ever wondered how you can learn more about culture while building connections with other students on campus? Kylie McKean tells us about USF's Culture Club and how you can get involved. The heart of Culture Club is that it will bring together those of different cultures and be a resource for students to learn about each other. Sonia Agasaro, sophomore at the University of Sioux Falls, is the president of Culture Club and shares why she started it. So I started Culture Club as a way to just have a safe space for people to have conversations about their cultures and for people that um, want to learn more about different cultures to have that avenue to be able to have conversations and learn different languages, enjoy different foods, that kind of thing because everyone has a culture, which I firmly believe in, and to just have conversations that unite us and make us really a community that learns about one another and cares and empathizes more than just saying, oh, we're a community, but to put it in actions. Pre-COVID, Culture Club would host events like potlucks and dances. However, even with COVID, Culture Club is finding ways to host students through movies, conversations, and other events. 
USF junior Saharo Ibrahim is the vice president of Culture Club. She shares why she hopes students will attend this club and some of her visions for the future of it. There's so much you don't know about someone that you like that walks past you sometimes that looks completely different from you. And so like, I think coming to a place like Culture Club is a great way to like learn something new about someone else. Especially nowadays with politics and everything, people can be scared to discuss certain things. But like over here, we're really open. And it's like, you can be yourself and like what what you think and how you feel, it matters. And you're, it's okay to express that here, you know? And so like the more people who understand that and know that and then like come actually experience it, I think the nicer it will be. Culture Club meets every Tuesday at 3 p.m. in the ward lobby of the McDonald Center. For The Vessel Online, I'm Kyla McKean. For more information on Culture Club, contact Sonia Agasaro. Many departments on campus have had to adapt to the tough circumstances we are living in. One of those departments is the USF's campus ministry. Austin Ludens has the story. At the University of Sioux Falls, campus ministry is a vital part of student life. Dennis Toom, the campus pastor, has been an important part of this ministry for over 30 years. Uh, University of Sioux Falls exists as a Christian college. When we cease being a Christian college, we cease to be uh, worth it. Uh, there's plenty of colleges around and plenty of options. So it's the Christian integrity of the university that is our identity, even though we, we are a very open and inclusive community and not requiring our students to be Christians, but still treating them in a Christian fashion. And so without campus ministry, uh, the school would still be a Christian school, but we would be less focused in our Christian mission. Giving students a sense of community is very important to campus ministry and something that's also important to ministry advocate Naomi Peterson. We want to clearly present the gospel on campus. We want to be um, lights on campus and equip other students. Um, we want to present a unified front uh, with it that just encourages community and the gospel community and build up believers in that. And then it's also just helping build the community, helping remind people that, you no, know, God is still good. He's still in control. He's still working through all of this. Um, yeah, that's definitely one of the important things, just being like stewards of God's grace and hope. As for the future of campus ministry, Dennis already has a plan in place. He's learned a lot from this challenging year and is ready to tackle the new challenges ahead. The next year is really transitioning to a new model of campus ministry where after 30 plus years with a campus, one campus pastor, uh, getting things adequately funded, bringing in new people, and in a sense they must increase and I must decrease as I phase out and we phase in a new era of leadership. So uh, that's going to make some interesting opportunities and challenges for the next three years. For The Vestal Online, I'm Austin Ludens. Contact Dennis Toome for more information on how you can get involved with campus ministries. Money is tight for a lot of college students, which makes it hard for some of them to get food. But USF has started a program hoping to help with hunger on campus. Rihanna Bannock has more on the story. On the first Saturday of March, USF students Kristen and Abigail were at hy -Vee raising money and food donations for the campus cupboard at USF. Sonia Agasaro, who is also a member of the Campus Cupboard Committee, explains how the program helps students. Campus Cupboard to me is a way to access groceries for students, just for students during times that um, the cafeteria is closed down or even just those times where you wonder where you're going to get your next meal. It's just that accessibility for students to reach out to. One of the founders of the Campus Cupboard, Teron Welch, says that he started the food pantry because he saw it as an opportunity to serve those in need. Just like normal life, um, just not having the, the access to reliable food or just not having access to um, like affordable food was just always, has always been a part of my life. Um, and so once I got the opportunity to serve others, um, I think that's when it really hit home for me. Um, and I was like, I don't want any other student or anyone in the, in the USF community to feel what I've been through in my life. And so um, to me, it's more of a personal mission um, to help fight food insecurity. Sonia says she has already seen how the food pantry has affected students. Even with the food that we've had on, at, at Campus Cupboard, we've seen so many people like take food that they need. And that really 
honestly just makes my heart smile because you don't notice how much people are affected by food insecurity until you have a resource that's available and then you really see the impact it has. For The Vessel Online, I'm Rihanna Bannock. Contact Taran or Sonia for more on how you can get involved with Campus Covered. Even with all hands on deck, the making of a film can be quite the task. USF's Ku Cinema Club has just recently submitted their new film to the 54 Film Festival. Gracie Wold has more on the story. USF's Ku Cinema Club have been taking the film festival world by storm. President Apollonia Davalos and Josh Wary fill me in on their most recent film endeavor. The Ku Cinema Club submitted a four minute and 27 second short horror film entitled The Basement to the 54 Film Festival. A lot of the members of Kitsunima Club kind of really met and built a community and a network between all these other filmmakers across the country. So that was extremely exciting and fun. We filmed longer than we thought we were going to. Originally, we thought we would just film in the morning and then the afternoon into the evening, but we filmed right up until midnight when the store closes. And then Sunday was just basically a whole day set aside for editing, which was really fun. Adam Paulson was our editor. So Brenda and I got to work really closely with him on that and just going through all the details and making the final product come alive. Additionally, some other members of the club were able to chat with me about their experiences. I was the assistant director, a co-writer, script manager, and also portrayed the character of the monster. This was my first film experience and it was so much fun. It was so fun to be able to get to work with your friends and also have a product at the end of 54 hours that you did collaboratively and everybody was able to work on. I'd say that the whole experience as a, um, as a whole uh, was pretty humbling because uh, I mean, you work with some amazing people, not only other actors and stuff like that, but the people who are working behind the camera, um, they, they are amazing. I was a production assistant and I assisted a lot with lighting and I had never experienced anything like making a film and I had an incredible time. I never thought I'd be interested in something like that. It was kind of just testing the waters. It was just so fun. You got to connect with so many people and really just have that kind of creative mindset with everyone. And it was just, it was really awesome. If you would like to watch The Basement, you can head over to the Coos Cinema Club's YouTube channel. For The Vessel Online, I'm Gracie Wold. Keep an eye out for more projects done by the Coos Cinema Club. The USF Wind Ensemble hasn't held an in-person concert in over a year, but they finally get the chance to play in front of a live audience. Austin Ludens has the story. The University of Sioux Falls Wind Ensemble had their first in-person concert in over a year last Friday. The director, Jonathan Niederheiser, talks about frustrations leading up to the concert. The most challenging thing for preparing for the concert was uh, just not knowing what the format was going to be. At the beginning, uh, we started the semester kind of working in, in half of bands. So we had kind of A band and B band, and I know the schedule got kind of wacky for everybody. Uh, just because I wasn't sure, we, would we have everybody on stage or not? And so as we got closer to the concert, it was clear we could have the full band. Uh, that was really awesome. Uh, but just that, I think the, the constantly changing schedule and you know not knowing who was going to be where, that probably was the most annoying thing for the students, for sure. With guidelines and live stream options in place, the Wind Ensemble was able to hold their socially distanced concert live and in person. I think the most fulfilling thing was just having that opportunity to finally be back all together uh, on the stage, to have an audience, uh, that excitement that, uh, and we, we still had fun playing and it's still been, been really great, but there's a little extra excitement this time, I think. Adam Paulson, a senior in the Wind Ensemble, reflects on the growth he's seen as they have prepared for the concert. I've seen the most growth of myself, at least, over the past past year of this stuff going on. Um, and the fact that I'm just a lot more flexible and just wanting to adapt to change. Because, like I said, we had that whole schedule change at the beginning of the semester. But even in the last year, we had like smaller groups, even smaller than two groups. So I would say just the fact of being more, more flexible and being more like, okay, this is what we're doing now, we're moving on. 
or the Vessel Online. I'm Austin Ludens. If you want to be a part of the Wind Ensemble, contact Jonathan Niederhauser. Every month you receive an email containing USF's student magazine, The Vessel. But have you ever wondered what the process for creating the magazine looks like? Here is a story showing us the inside scoop of Vessel Editing. The Vessel is the USF student magazine that features stories about campus activities and events that runs monthly. Matea Lines, senior media studies student, is one of the editors for The Vessel and discusses her passion for it and what it entails. Um, so that includes like editing stories um, and then coming up with the design layout and colors and the whole design aspect for the magazine. Also lead meetings, um, sometimes take pictures, um, take the writer's headshots. Since being the editor, I have found like a new appreciation, I guess you could say, or hobby or passion for graphic design. So I've been thinking about applying for like graphic design jobs. So. I think this definitely like gives me experience doing that, being that like my major isn't technically graphic design, but because I get the opportunity to do this, it gives me that experience that I would need. The Vessel editors have set up shop at home because of COVID precautions, but are still working hard to bring you stories like Culture Club, Streaming Spotlight, and Sports Updates. USF junior Greta Smith, majoring in Art, English, and Media Studies, is the other editor for The Vessel. Smith shares her experience along with how students can get involved. And then once I get the stories, it's all just like a few days of just me really cranking hard on the layouts and getting them done. And then sending it to um, our staff overseers, is that the word? Um, Nick and Nancy, and they tell us, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, just kidding. They tell us all the things that need to be corrected, um, but they do it very nicely. Um, and so then we get it back and fix the things, send it out again. They'll say, this is wrong, and then we fix the things, send it out again, and then it's done. Usually that's how it works. And it takes longer than you think because if it was just one person doing it, obviously they'd have just the document open and they would do it all themselves, but it's... A, a team process and people are busy so you could send an email to myself to Matea to Nancy so either of the editors or any of the media studies advisors and they will get you set up usually we have you know somebody that's writing a story that's not technically in the class and they just like to do it and that's totally fine we love those stories those outside perspectives from the because then it's like you want to do it so we actually really love it when people are people are doing that so it's, it's really easy to get to get involved with that. Contact Nancy Sutton for more information on how you can be a part of the Vessel team. For the Vessel Online, I'm Kyla McKean. USF Intramurals kicked off this spring with a ping pong tournament, and Alan Indijaro shared his thoughts on how it was a safe way to enter back onto community on campus. Sports have looked different this year due to COVID, and intramurals at USF weren't an exception. Alan Ejao helped the ping pong tournament run as smoothly as possible. So this is our first ping pong tournament that we've held this academic year, but I'm sure it's been around for, for several years, but we decided to do it this semester just to gain more um, uh, student involvement, student engagement on campus. So there were a total of 12 um, athletes. The athletes were provided an opportunity to be involved socially as well as athletically, which has been hard to come by this academic year. We didn't have to worry about too much of um, social distancing, but we still required our students to wear masks. Also being apart from one end of the table to another that allowed for social distancing. Um, students have their own paddles as well, so they didn't touch a lot of the same items. <laughs> Kelsey Oswald played the winner of the entire tournament in the first round, but she still plans to participate again in the future. Didn't get to go this year, you can always go next year, and hopefully I'll be a little more prepared. <laughs> I got my butt kicked, but it was a really good time. For The Vessel Online, I'm Anna Brecht. Keep an eye out for the posters hanging around campus containing information about future intramurals. Coming up after the break, Tyler will look at what USF students have been doing out in the community and the most important event this semester, the upcoming graduation ceremony.
Are you a USF student who is worried about where your next meal will come from? Or do you wonder how you will get food when the cafeteria is closed? The Campus Cupboard was created to end hunger at USF. It's a food pantry available to all students who are struggling financially and need help with groceries. The Campus Cupboard is located in the basement of Mears Library and is open to all. Our Savior's Lutheran Church also has a food pantry available to college students. For more information, you can visit their website at oslchurch.com. Hello, and welcome to the USF Vessel. I'm Tyler Blackburn. A new year brings new opportunities. Seniors at the University of Sioux Falls are getting eager for graduation and preparing for a job in the real world. Here's Matea Lyons with more on the story. Spring semester at the University of Sioux Falls is in full swing and seniors are on the home stretch until graduation. Media studies student Kylan McKean shares about how the support she's gotten in the media program at USF has helped her get ready for a job after graduation. Nick and Nancy being so willing to help with every little thing. Um, I get emails from Nancy every single day with internships and job opportunities and they're just so ready to help us take the next steps after graduation and just get into our fields that we enjoy. Not only is McKean getting geared up for graduation, but she also shares that video editing has been her favorite thing to learn while being a part of the media program. My favorite part of media studies has definitely been video editing. Um, it's something where you can just change it up every time, make something new. There are so many techniques and skills within video editing um, that I just really enjoy. So video editing is definitely my favorite part of media studies. Alongside McKean, media studies senior Adam Paulson shares how the resources at USF have helped him see a well-rounded outlook on media going forward. So the resources at USF for media majors has really helped me in that it has shown me lots of different um, tools and resources I have, or is it, even if it's just like Mac or PC, or if it's like um, photography, videography, graphic design, it just gives me a nice well-rounded outlook on media and gives me experience in lots of different things so that I kind of know a little bit about everything going into the field. The University of Sioux Falls commencement ceremonies will take place at the Sioux Falls Convention Center on Sunday, May 16th, with three different ceremonies being at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. with masks and social distancing required. For The Vessel Online, I'm Matea Lines. Cougar Activities Board puts on many events for students to get involved at USF. However, one event in particular focuses on helping those around the USF community who are in need. Here's Rihanna Bannock with the story. Before the sun had even rose to begin the day, a group of USF students prayed together as they started their morning serving at the banquet. The event was called Bring It to the Banquet. It was a serving opportunity created by CAP, where students volunteer to prepare and serve food for the homeless and those in need. The event organizer, Cassidy Nelson, has been a CAB member for almost three years. She wanted to put together serving at the banquet because of the variety of jobs and how it impacts her as a volunteer. There's a lot of variety within the event because not everybody's doing the same thing and like you can have your friends come do it. Um, but yeah, I also just really, in, in my own life, I enjoy going to the banquet and serving. So you always leave feeling really good and like you're gonna have a great day because you started your day off with serving others, so. Cassidy explains how volunteering at events like this one can benefit students greatly. Yeah, it's just, it's, it makes you feel good when you can make other people feel good. And mm -hmm. I mean, it, not everybody at USF is a Christian, but you know, Jesus taught us to serve others. Rachel Spenced was one of the USF students who attended the event. She describes how serving food helped her realize that eating three meals a day is not easy for some, like it is for her. A lot of people like have enough food. Um, like not as much as I think, like I take it for granted that I get to eat three meals a day and eat whenever I want. Like if I want breakfast, I just go to the cafe, sweat my card and I can eat all I want. Whereas like these people, they don't have that opportunity. And so for them just to get breakfast is a big deal. Rachel talks about why she would encourage other students to volunteer at opportunities such as this. And I think so much of our culture is like about us and satisfying our needs and wants. So um, serving is a good opportunity to like take our eyes off ourselves for a minute and just focus on serving other people. And yeah, I think it's really great to be part of service opportunities and you get to know some really cool people. And um, I've just always had a great experience with it. So I definitely encourage others to do it too. 
For The Vessel Online, I'm Rihanna Bannock. The banquet seems like such a nice event that we could help those around our community. The Washington Pavilion here in Sioux Falls has an esteemed reputation for creating and displaying amazing artwork. University of Sioux Falls students are now being given a chance to be a part of that. Here's Mercedes Odegaard with the story. The University of Sioux Falls and the Washington Pavilion have created a partnership that now gives students and staff the opportunity to display their work. The Washington Pavilion curator, Cody Heinrichs, has been the middleman throughout the entire process. I contacted CISA Cooper um, probably two years ago or a year ago uh, and started to develop a relationship with the University of Sioux Falls. And uh, CISA is pretty regular in, in all the spaces and has been a staple in the arts department at USF for many years. And then in addition, um, I had a relationship with Joe Schaefer while he was still a graduate student at USD. So working a ton with those two, I started to develop a, basically a process where I would visit universities, meet with the faculty, uh, talk about the student exhibition and, and try to work together in collaboration with their faculty to put together kind of contra, you know, uh, comprehensive understanding what's happening inside of each university and what their departments are putting out. Recently, USF students had the opportunity to have some of their artwork displayed in the pavilion in the Young Artist Gallery. The show was titled New Normal and drew awareness to the struggles students faced while trying to create art in these unprecedented times. So that's sort of how it started and then obviously the pandemic hit. So we had on the books already the idea to do the exhibition and then as a result of the pandemic the the content shifted towards this conversation around the new normal and and really what does it mean to be making without studio space or making in isolation with inadequate opportunities for materials or, or whatever restrictions you're encountering due to the pandemic um, certainly i think for artists it's it's more of a challenge for the vessel online i'm mercedes odegaard USF's collegiate choir has been unable to perform concerts how they would normally do it in the past, but have taken new approaches to their performances this semester. Gracie Wald has the story. With COVID-19 still remaining a large issue on campus, USF's collegiate choir director, David D. Hogue Cleaver, has found new ways to adapt to the new guidelines for the choir. The choirs have accomplished many goals to get to perform in a space like the Cathedral of St. Joseph uh, is just such a privilege and an opportunity. You know, my students have performed in a lot of cathedrals across Europe and the Cathedral of St. Joseph right here in Sioux Falls ranks right up there with them as far as uh, a house of worship that invites such reverence it's an honor and a privilege. It's really a humbling experience to get to uh, record in the cathedral or perform concerts, which we've done in the past and will do in the future as well. Aside from the choir's concert performances, they also host small controlled events to keep spirits up in the community. Collegiate in particular has become known as the party choir. For the last several years, Collegiate has had a special spirit about it. It felt like people enjoyed being there and they enjoyed the people around them. And then we created opportunities uh, to have some downtime and just to enjoy both prayerful reflection through devotionals, community building and spiritual growth, but also time to just eat candy and play games. This semester in particular, we thought it was important for that type of community building. And then the day after our lawn chair concert on Mother's Day, we're planning on having a third big bash. I think that one is going to be Halloween in May karaoke. <laughs> our collegiate council is so creative. Let's celebrate each other. Let's celebrate God-given gifts and opportunities and enjoy our time in rehearsal and our time in um, building community. 
If you would like to watch the USF Choir's most recent performance, you can find it on the Vessel Online's YouTube channel. For the Vessel Online, I'm Gracie Wold. You can watch the full concert on our YouTube page or on the USF Vessel website. The Wind Ensemble also got together for their first in-person concert of the year. Austin Ludens reports on the challenges of performing while following campus social distancing guidelines. The University of Sioux Falls Wind Ensemble had their first in-person concert in over a year last Friday. The director, Jonathan Niederheiser, talks about frustrations leading up to the concert. The most challenging thing for preparing for the concert was uh, just not knowing what the format was going to be at the beginning. Uh, we started the semester kind of working in, in half of bands. So we had kind of A band and B band, and I know the schedule got kind of wacky for everybody uh, just because I wasn't sure we, would we have everybody on stage or not. And so as we got closer to the concert, it was clear we could have the full band. Uh, that was really awesome. Uh, but just that I think the, the constantly changing schedule and you know not knowing who was going to be where, that probably was the most annoying thing for the students for sure. With guidelines and live stream options in place, the Wind Ensemble was able to hold their socially distanced concert live and in person. I think the most fulfilling thing was just having that opportunity to finally be back all together uh, on the stage, to have an audience, uh, that excitement that, um, and we, we still had fun playing and we've still been, been really great, but there's a little extra excitement this time, I think. Adam Paulson, a senior in the Wind Ensemble, reflects on the growth he's seen as they have prepared for the concert. I've seen the most growth myself, at least, over the past, past year of this stuff going on. Um, in the fact that I'm just a lot more flexible and just wanting to adapt to change. Because, like I said, we had that whole schedule change at the beginning of the semester. But even in the last year, we had like smaller groups, even smaller than two groups. So I'd say just the fact of being more, more flexible and being more like, like okay, this is what we're doing now, we're moving on. For The Vessel Online, I'm Austin Ludens. As a student, there are many options as far as classes, clubs, and workshops to participate in around campus throughout the year. One such event was held by one of our very own students, and I sat down to talk with her about it. On March 5th and 6th, University of Sioux Falls student Brenda Whip held a pageant workshop titled, What's Wrong with Being Confident? My goal of this workshop is to be able to share how I gained my confidence through my experience in pageantry and how that affected my theater experience. I just wanted to share that with others and hopefully give them some confidence as well. You need to be able to know what's happening. So, how to prepare for private interview. Brenda gave participants the chance to experience what a pageant consists of and gave them the opportunity to practice skills such as speaking in front of judges, perfecting their walk on stage, and performing their talents in front of a live audience. been curious uh, to see some of the background structure to pageant style performance as well as understanding the mentality of the people who are a part of pageants. Going into Miss South Dakota does stand up company for her talent. You can literally do whatever you want. So what they are looking for. Despite leaving the event open to any individuals that wanted to join, all women showed up to Brenda's workshop. I wasn't targeting a specific audience, it just so happened that all women came, but I was, it was open to anyone. So not only women are able to feel empowered and feel confident, so it really is fun to share that with everyone. At the conclusion of the workshop, the ladies who participated gained valuable skills to help them not only in pageantry, but also with their overall confidence in the future. This has been Tyler Blackburn with The Vessel Online. Since the pandemic began, the world has adapted our methods of putting on events. Live streaming events has become somewhat of an art form. Parker Brown has the story. If you can't be there, or you wouldn't feel comfortable there, it's always nice to have another option to do events. Live streaming has become a safe way to make events more accessible. With all the moving parts of live streaming, the tech team has adapted well, but setting up has come with new challenges. It's kind of like in three pieces, right? We have our computer system, we have 
the sound system, which is an external sound system, we're not plugged directly into the Meredith Auditorium sound system itself. And then we have connections through the internet, so we're hardwired in. But you also need an external source, which I use for my, my laptop for the live stream itself, because you can't have an open Zoom and YouTube link or else there's feedback. And it's just, they're just screaming at each other. I'd say the most difficult part of setting up for Thursday Night Worship is just getting all the equipment up to the stage because just the auditorium or just the, as a building, it was not entirely meant for us to do this kind of thing. So we just have this big black box that we just drag. Literally, we go a lap around the basement. We, we go up to the elevator, then we do a lap around the top floor, and then we kind of have to squeeze it through this narrow hallway and just kind of push it through to the other side. And it's just, every, every Thursday night, it's a workout, I'm telling you. In particular, the audio setup is drastically different for a live streamed event. We have to be really aware and specific about the frequency. And so between the distance between the mics, the computer, and the sound system, in a way, they have to have their own social distancing. <laughs> the time that the team devotes to preparing live streams might be more than you would think. Now I'm a little bit more comfortable, but my goal is 30 minutes prior to showtime. So let's say if chapel starts at 10, we need to be completely ready at 930 because the rule of thumb is that doors open 30 minutes prior. So I, when we're getting our initial setup, I'd get there an hour and a half early. So that'd be 830. All the time and effort put into putting on an event has its own reward outside of the successful stream. Um, I'd say the most rewarding part is just being able to create an experience where people can come and worship and just not even have to think about anything and just be able to like hear the sound and just be able to make a connection with God. And the fact that we can make that a possibility for people is what I enjoy most about this. Behind the scenes, things can happen prior to the show, post, but if the actual event, the actual programming runs so smoothly, mwah, that is success. I am so happy, mostly because I care about what we put out as a school for USF, and I want us to be showcased well. Uh, so that when that happens, that's very rewarding. But what's the most is the feedback, the positive feedback we receive for someone who could not be present physically for one of our programs, and they hear and listen to something like chapel, and they sent us an email and saying, I really needed to hear this today. For The Vessel Online, I'm Parker Brown. Check, check. We look forward to many more events live streamed on campus throughout the semester. USF's history department is gaining new classes this semester, with one even focused on the year 2020. Brooke Norgard has the story. As 2021's spring semester winds down, we look ahead to a new fall semester with new opportunities. USF's history department has seen changes as new classes have been added and new classes are still to come. Lindsay Peterson, a history professor at USF, spoke of the newer and upcoming classes. One of them, public history, is centered around the year 2020 and preserving that historic year. It's designed to introduce students to um, more of a hands-on historical approach. So typically when you take a history class at USF, right, we, we do a lot of lecture, we do a lot of like research and writing and reading about the past. This is something new. This is something very different than that. Um, it's a hands-on history class that is designed around 2020. So basically, um, historians are really involved in preserving like documents and preserving people's voices and things like that, in addition to all the work they do in, in studying people of the past. So um, this class is going to basically preserve a little bit of that historical memory of the institution of the university um, throughout the year 2020, probably bleed into 2021 a little bit because the pandemic is still ongoing and whatnot. Um, we want to preserve kind of a year um, that's really important uh, among students and other community members' lives. And, and, and it, through that project, basically introduce students to public history and oral history, like uh, approaches and ideas about that aspect of the discipline. Courses were added recently, and USF students got to experience them for the first time. Intro to Gender Studies, alongside U.S. Women's History, joined the History Department as well. It was Intro to Gender Studies, and then I also last fall taught um, U.S. Women's History. 
So, you know, very related, um, different classes, but very related topics. I love both of those classes because they are, you know, topics in my specialty. Um, and I think that, you know, with the, um, these two classes, as well as African American history and the public history class, among others offered at USF, they really go hand in hand with the university's like most recent um, initiative towards the like diversity committee um, as well. Professor Peterson shared her admiration for USF students and why she chose to teach these classes and why she believes they're so impactful, not just for history students, but for everyone. The students at USF are just phenomenal. Like they're just so eager to learn and to explore new ideas and to, you know, learn new things, especially things that they um, didn't learn in high school. I'm really passionate about these different classes. Uh, my own research does a lot with race and gender in women's history, um, particularly in the context of the military. But um, so they are areas that I'm well versed in. I also think that they are really uh, important areas. And, and I mean, let's face it, most of the students who come to a history class are not history majors, right? They're, they're um, accountants, you know, they're, they're psychology majors. I have a lot of art students, right? And so um, these classes, I think, uh, you know, even though most of the students in class aren't going to be studying like women's courses um, in the past, right, they can take those ideas and apply them to their own area of studies. So they're really good analytical tools. Um, they are, are classes that can help students um, get the like, analytical, critical thinking skills that they need as, as they go out into the workforce, whatever avenue they, they choose to be, as well as writing skills. But they're also good skills for just being um, an American citizen, like being part of, of the country and, and being able to analyze how you fit into this world and how you, know, how you relate to others around you and how we construct you know, who you are in, in this moment in time too. For The Vessel Online, I'm Brooke Norgard. Kevin Cole worked hard to bring a unique experience to USF students by giving them the opportunity to take English 200 as an outdoor class. Bryce Couch has the story. In the fall of 2020, Kevin Cole was ready to take a risk. After years of planning and logistical work, he was ready to introduce English 200 as an outdoor class. You know, when you teach an all outdoor class, an all gen ed, uh, you know, a gen ed class, like a liberal arts core class, like English 200, it's something of a risk because you have no idea how it's going to turn out. Um, additionally, it's a lot of work. It took me three years to plan this course. Uh, I didn't just come up with it one day, throw together a syllabus and make it happen. I walked all the places where we go um, many, many, many times. I even charted out how long it took to get from one place to another and where I could sit down and have conversations on each, you know, during each class period. So it took a lot of logistics to put it together. Cole believes that students are ready to get out of the box and pursue different environments to learn in. I believe uh, many students are really longing to get out of the box, uh, to get out of the facility, especially now uh, during COVID. And that wasn't intentional, of course, that the two intersected. Overall, there is a lot of excitement coming from the English department as they work tirelessly to make the education USF students receive top notch. Like many of our colleagues in other areas, we are always making changes and adjustments to, the, to our curriculum. Um, this one got a little more airtime because it's a, a liberal arts core class and so many people take it. Um, so we're always fine-tuning adjustments. For The Vessel Online, I'm Bryce Couch. For more information about English 200, contact Kevin Cole. Justin Bieber's new album dropped recently. Matea Lyons asked USF students what they think about the new tunes. Yes. I listened to a few of the songs on it, but I did not listen to the full album. No. Not yet. <laughs> yes. I didn't listen to it. <laughs> I think that he's definitely grown in the way that he writes his music. He definitely puts a lot more meaning into his newer songs. I thought that it was like really different compared to all of his other albums. I feel like 
I, there's always a few songs in his other ones that I was like, mm, I'm not vibing with that one. But this one, I never wanted to like skip a song. I feel like you could tell he put a lot more time, or I feel like he put a lot more time and they have a lot more meaning rather than just singing about like relationships. It's actually like a meaningful album. Oh, I love it so much. I can't stop listening to it. I love the range and all of the people that he's brought in, especially Jaden. Jaden Smith is back. The song is dope and I just love the collaboration again. After never say never. Peaches! <laughs> I didn't listen to it. <laughs> My favorite song is Lifetime. <laughs> Wait, what's it called? Hold on. The I Can't Be Myself when I was the one with Jaden, Unstable with the Kid Leroy, and Peaches. So good. Um, he has better hair now than the swoop. He's pretty chill. I think it's cool how he's like more open about his faith now. I'm definitely gonna drop like at least four hundred dollars on a concert ticket for him. I do like him. I just haven't listened to his new songs. I'm not an active follower of anyone. So. I love Justin Bieber. I just haven't had the chance to listen to his full album yet. Thank you for joining us here at The Vessel. We'll see you next fall. Go Koo!